Yeah, I'd like to talk a little bit about, about EPIC. I mean, at your last conference in, in March, you, you launched EPIC 4, the current iteration of the consortium. It's been working directly uh, with policymakers and the Scottish Government since 2011. And it is fascinating to learn how EPIC has changed and evolved since then and the value that you give to, to us as policymakers and the assistance that you've, you've given us in government as we face various challenges, some some uh, happening right right now, um, and and the the sort of like the the strengthening of those bonds between EPIC and government are, are really really important for us. We need to be able to make decisions with um, as much expertise um, as possible, as much research uh, helping us as possible. Um, it follows a unique model. Uh, combining collaborative, multidisciplinary working with a strong emphasis, emphasis on communication and making that interface between science and policy work uh, really effective. And we're very proud of that. In Scotland, we've got an excellent reputation for high standards in animal health and welfare, and our livestock industry helps to sustain rural communities, communities like my constituency, significant a very significant part of our economy. And EPIC have got a really valuable role in maintaining this. Um, science has got a pivotal role in the control of animal diseases, and that's why I view EPIC as being key to achieving that effective animal disease control in Scotland. You help encompass disease detection, prevention, treatment, management routinely, as well as responding to requests to address new and ongoing challenges that the livestock industry in Scotland faces. And we also rely on the wealth of scientific expertise within EPIC to help in our readiness to respond to a disease outbreak. I feel as if I should be touching wood every time I say that. Um, in the past, we were lucky to refer to the time when we did not face a disease outbreak as, as peacetime. However, uh, what a summer we've had. Uh, the ongoing impact of avian influenza in Scotland, now into its uh, third concurrent year, we don't have that luxury and we, we can't relax our guard uh, on this disease, indeed any other. EPIC have been instrumental in how we ready ourselves, support industry and engage with members of the public on the risks we face with avian influenza. It's been particular, my particular constituency has been, been hard hit in the neighbouring constituency that has Troop Head, that wonderful place with all those, those gannets, and it's really been quite heartbreaking over the last three years to see those uh, poor animals and uh, suffering. And it really has captured the imagination of the public as well. They need, really need that guidance to know what to do. Um, and, 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 and the advice from EPIC has helped us, government and local authorities, in actually getting that me those messages out to the public. Um, you've also helped build our knowledge on why some backyard poultry keepers can find it difficult to comply with poultry housing regulations during an incursion, and we now have a better understanding of the production and financial effects of a housing order on the free-range egg production. You also continue to work alongside scientific and veterinary colleagues in DEFRA and the Animal and Plant Health Agency, and more widely as well uh, in, with those in Scottish Government, um, contributing to the effort to combat avian influenza across Great Britain and indeed across Europe. You provide valued expertise through the Five Nations Veterinary Risk Assessment Group, working in collaboration with government colleagues from across the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland. EPIC is key to how the Scottish Government prepares contingency plans for animal disease outbreaks. Contingency planning for animal disease is a crucial part of our biodiversity and livestock management in Scotland. It helps us to prepare for and respond to the disease outbreaks to effectively minimise and quickly minimise their impact on animal health, welfare, livestock industry and potentially public health and wider economy. <coughs> African swine fever continues to be one of the biggest concerns for Scotland's pig industry. Again, I have a constituency connection. I've probably got one of the, bit, the largest uh, uh, amount of, of, of pig farms in, er, in, the, in my constituency. See, Ms. Ms. Goujon, my cabinet secretary, between the two of us, we probably have the vast majority. Um, it's spread across the, the globe, um, and we've seen the disease jump large distances to new, re new regions, which can't be explained through the movement of wild boar, even within Europe. And therefore, there are clear instances where disease has been spread through human-mediated routes, either by virus and clothing, vehicles, equipment, and the movement of infected animals or meat. 
And the work that EPIC have carried out in this area has allowed the government to have a better understanding of the structure of the pig industry and in turn has allowed us to improve our contingency plans for African swine fever. Controlling endemic animal disease in Scotland is not just important for maintaining the health and wealth, uh, welfare of livestock, it helps us maintain our reputation for high animal health and welfare and the reputation, I guess, of, of our, of our uh, rural economy and our farming community as well and the produce that they, that they produce. Healthy livestock are more efficient, produce less greenhouse gas, as we know, than diseased animals um, or those with poor uh, reproductive performance. And, of course, healthy livestock also require less expensive veterinary treatment and the lower use of antibiotics. And th this reducing the risk of developing bacteria that have antimicrobial resistance protects human health. And I really think that we're in a space right now where the general public want to see, we, they want to know what's in their food. They're, they're calling on um, the, the supermarkets, the, the various uh, retailers there to have assurances around an awful lot of that. It's not niche anymore. This is in the public discourse. EPIC's work on sheep scab has helped us understand the thoughts of farmers on biosecurity, the risks borne by movements of sheep, and help l uh, link the project in Lewis and Harris with future actions on the disease. And our industry-led approach to eradicating BBD is uh, just about to enter consultation and the next phase of the eradication scheme. Over the years, EPIC have influenced the direction of the eradication scheme, steering it to a position where Scotland is almost free of the disease, and that is a, um, a significant achievement. From a genetic library of BBD isolates to studies on farmer behaviour, your work has helped us develop really effective policy. With this strong background, we're now proposing new powers in the Agriculture and Rural Communities Bill. It was uh, just launched, introduced to the Scottish Parliament last Thursday. And these powers will enable Scottish ministers to provide support for the promotion, the protection and improvement of animal health and welfare and animal genetic resources. And the bill also proposes new powers to make rules about the identification of animals as well. These powers could be used to introduce mandatory bovine electronic identification, something that would be a step towards further improvements on efficiency in farms, markets and in abattoirs. So within animal health and welfare, a new Scottish animal gatherings order is proposed which would join the current markets and disease control interim measures legislation, as well as animal gatherings that will consider animal standstills and separation agreements. EPIC produced a really valuable report on assessing changes to Scottish movement restrictions and their impact on simulated foot and mouth disease, disease outbreak. This research, which EPIC carried out, provided us with the evidence to review our current policies and adapt them to ensure the best outcomes for industry and animal health control. And it highlights again how scientific research and modelling play a key role in informing policy decisions. You are all the experts in, in animal health. I am backed by an incredible team led by, by Sheila Vos, our chief vet. I mean, I, I have to rely on your expertise to make those right policy decisions. It's an integral part to evidence policy uh, making. The only way to deal with our global health emergencies like pandemic disease and antimicrobial resistance is for veterinary and medical sciences to work together. This is the One Health Initiative. Um, in, in our case, the, an essential collaborative effort between the fields of human and veterinary medicine and the environment. And we all know that d disease, <laughs> my goodness, if we didn't know it before, we know it now, disease does not respect borders, geographical boundaries or species differences. COVID-19 was that stark reminder of the potential for animal disease to jump species. And we expect that other diseases will do that in the future. Highly pathogenic avian influenza is another example of a virus that has jumped species in the past and may do so in the future. We're already seeing this year certain types of birds being affected that weren't in the previous years. Um, the One Health approach to monitoring bird flu is well established, but experts continue to, to map cases in birds, humans and animals worldwide. 
Tracking those changes in the flu virus allows us to predict the risk to human and other mammals, and this supports contingency planning and prevention strategies. I have lost count of the amount of emails I've had over the summer about my dog touched the bird, you know, that, that kind of thing, you know. And we, that, we're sharing space with our, 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 our wildlife as well, and uh, we, need to be, uh, we need to have that knowledge about what that means for us and our behaviours as well. Um, it also has a practical impact in terms of uh, designing effective human flu vaccination strategies ahead of global winter flu seasons. Na national and international surveillance of antimicrobial resistance is another example of using that one health approach for the benefit of both humans and animals. And our limited range of antimicrobial drugs is, is very precious resource. Better understanding of how they're used, how resistance develops, gives the best chance of conserving drug, drug efficacy. And at One Health has promoted that stewardship in veterinary and human medicine. As a result, there have been reductions in antimicrobial anti use in all livestock sectors, including in Scotland, reflecting that significant effort on the part of livestock keepers and vets to use these important drugs only when absolutely needed. One Health uh, scientist studying bacteria and parasites are working to identify the genetic markers of antimicrobial resistance and can trace the spread of resistance genes between disease organisms. Humans and animals share some of these diseases, both, but both sectors benefit when that resistance can be detected and controlled. And these global issues can only be tackled by working in multidisciplinary uh, uh, groups uh, like EPIC, sharing data and findings and following that uh, One Health approach on a multinational basis. 